Hello and welcome to NAFTA and Your Health. My name is Tosing Omolaja. This is the program that brings you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ, the agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. Today on the program, we bring you highlights of the working visit of the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniri, to NAFDAQ to get updates on the agency's activities especially as it concerns COVID-19 vaccines, but also drug security in the country, amongst other issues under the purview of NAFDAQ. Uh, for the vaccine validation, we have six regulatory controls. Uh, NAFDAQ carries out these control functions to ensure vaccine quality, safety, and efficacy throughout the product life cycle. Uh, we're expecting a vaccine uh, to come in, into the country uh, if we approve uh, for emergency use or licensing, then the company can arrange to ship their products in, into the country and they, they will meet our port inspection directorate uh, and then we take samples. Uh, usually most of the vaccines are under cold chain. We take samples for laboratory testing. Uh, clinical evaluation, that's one of the things that we look at. Uh, facility planning and GMP inspection, that should be in the, in the, in the dossier. Uh, they are not released. What is the consistency from batch to batch? And then what is the post-marketing surveillance or pharmacovigilance that they did in carrying out uh, their development? In terms of uh, parameters reviewed, I just mentioned some. Validated manufacturing process, validated verification of quality control test, and stability data. Because of the cold chain that many of these vaccines have to be under, we have to, you know, uh, qualify the product upon entry, and also go to the supply chain, you know, and withdraw samples to ensure that the cold chain has not been broken and that the stability is uh, kept. The Director General acknowledged their expectation of the country as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. In our presentation to the Honorable Minister, she outlined the process as well as the review parameters the agency has put in place to ensure that the vaccines made available to Nigerians are efficacious and safe for use. These are the types of things that our own local manufacturers would need to uh, also takes into cognition. We will we'll be supporting them, of course, uh, in terms of what they will need to know. For a local manufacturer of vaccine, uh, I was talking with Professor Tomori, that we will come alongside with them right from the beginning, so that there will not be any assumption or mistakes made uh, during the building itself, because it has to follow international best practices. And WHO will need to certify that site we don't want to want have WHO come after. We want to bring, uh, uh, put build, uh, quality into the building instead of instead of adding. Of course, they are not released. Of course, we be, we reflect their laboratory good laboratory practices and also the quality of their system. Uh, the post marketing surveillance uh, that is left for us. She also confirmed that the agency has put processes in place to support the local production of COVID-19 vaccines and NAFDAQ's resolve to support and guide local producers in attaining global standards in vaccine production. Okay, vaccine efficacy uh, is a very big part of our review and uh, the vaccine committee has been doing wonderfully uh, in terms of few of the doses that we have right now. Uh, so they look through the clinical development program, evidence of clinical effic efficacy against hospitalization, possible possibility of severe disease coming up, uh, evidence of induction of neutralizing antibody, all those uh, details they look through. And then the safety, uh, a risk management plan has to be built uh, into the pharmacovigilance plan. Uh, so that is huge in, uh, for our review and the uh, detailed review of available data and objectives of benefits versus risk uh, ratio, all this have to be considered. 
Sputnik COVID-19 vaccine from Russia is one of the vaccines that has been considered by NAFDAQ and is being reviewed. According to the DG, extensive meetings have been held between Nigeria and the Russian delegation. Uh, the Sputnik uh, vaccine is a viral vector or has a viral vector platform. Uh, we met with uh, Sputnik group, uh, the Sputnik committee met with this, uh, people from Russia last week. And uh, there are some additional data that we are requesting from them. Uh, manufacturing and quality control, uh, data demonstrating that all source material used in manufacturing processes or process are adequately controlled. Uh, manufacturing process validation data, uh, the final safety and efficacy data from the phase three study they will need to submit to us. Additional data on protective antibody titer, uh, including relevant pharmacovigilance plan uh, that they have uh, in mind should be provided. Another thing that we checked uh, that they need to provide is commitment to undertake active pharmacovigilance through cohort events uh, on a substantial number of immunized persons. That is what uh, a pharmaceutical company should do. Uh, when you have a new product on the market for emergency use, they have to come alongside the country pharmacovigilance group, primary health, NAVDAC and them uh, to, uh, to, to monitor uh, some of the immunized uh, persons in, at our Sentinel sites. The COVAX vaccine is also being considered. Although COVAX has committed to supporting Nigeria with COVID-19 vaccines to immunize up to 20% of our population, the process of verifying these vaccines is still ongoing. Covaxin is the second vaccine. The characterization of their cell bank, uh, the master of working seed lots must be, should be provided. Manufacturing process validation data, we will need that. Information on pharmaceutical development process should be included, not yet there right now. Uh, but the most uh, important, actually very important, is uh, the fact that uh, only phases one and two data were submitted. Uh, phase three data have not been submitted at all. But we cannot do anything until phase three data are available. Since she took helms of NAFDAQ in 2018, Professor Adeyeye has worked tirelessly to improve the agency's standing globally and upgrade its operations. Under her watch, the agency has gone from level one to level two on the WHO global benchmarking. She gave the Honorable Minister an update of the process, which is still ongoing. Update on the journey to WHO uh, global benchmarking maturity level three. This. Uh, audit or roadmap was actually mandated uh, by World Health uh, Assembly uh, Resolution 67.20 on system on regulatory system strengthening for medicines and vaccine products. Because we are talking of vaccine and the fact that Nigeria no longer manufactures uh, our own vaccines, uh, WHO demands that the in-country regulatory framework must be very strong. For vaccine quality assurance purposes, a robust in-country regulatory framework is needed to support local vaccine manufacturing or production. You will see at uh, the bottom uh, panel, sir, that there are four levels uh, or four maturity levels. One, two, three, four. Four. And what uh, WHO wishes or requires is that a lot of the uh, regulatory agencies must be at level three. Uh, if you look at uh, levels one and two, over 144 uh, regulatory agencies globally are still under one, are still at one or two. And about 50 uh, at three and four. Uh, our goal is to get to level three and we are working assiduously uh, for, you know, to, to get to that purpose and you will see some of the information. We don't have done WHO global benchmarking without 
certification for quality management system. The goal of quality management system is to imbibe quality culture into the agency, to place customer first, and also to be mindful of the image of the agency. We started this April 2018, just about four or five months when I came, and we actually um, added to our logo, uh, our motto rather, uh, to become customer focused, agency minded. Because if we have those two qualities, then we will have quality products. Our people will also be more confident in what they are taking because we are always thinking uh, about them in whatever uh, situation we find ourselves or activities that we are involved with. So we started the ISO 9001 certification process. Uh, Wavo, uh, Unido partially supported us. Uh, we use all our own money for majority of it, but it was a great support because that gave us a push. The agency's designated quality team, the directors and staff in Lagos and Abuja were trained by the external consultants. It is a dynamic process. We are improving daily. Uh, I mentioned that we did this, we got this uh, certification June 19. Uh, excuse me, June 2019, but we have just been re-accredited or recertified, which means that we have been improving. Our systems now are standard operating processes, op operating procedures driven. Before we didn't have that. Now our documentation is light and day compared to what used to be. We have uh, the SharePoint, uh, it's a Microsoft uh, uh, software where we now put all our documents. We are not where I would think we should be, but in terms of what uh, WHO needs it for evidences, uh, we have this SharePoint. And they can actually click on our SharePoint and see everything that we are putting there in terms of evidence to support our global benchmarking towards level three. For the global benchmarking, it is ISO 9004 as opposed to the quality management system that is ISO 9001. Uh, this represents the primary means by which WHO objectively evaluates the regulatory system globally. It is designed to evaluate the overarching regulatory framework and the component regulatory functions. There are six or seven components. The, the NRA vaccine lot release, because we have not been manufacturing, we, we are not manufacturing yet, uh, we didn't cover that, but we went through, we are going through the regulatory system function, registration and market authorization, vigilance, uh, market surveillance, licensing establishment. Licensing establishment, we are doing that with PCN because PCN has to license a site for a manufacturing company to start uh, working. So both PCN and NAVDA are being reviewed under that licensing establishment. Regulatory inspection uh, is another function, laboratory testing, clinical trials oversight. Again, the clinical trials oversight is not just NAVDA. NREC and NAVDA started working together uh, because they want to be sure that the process of doing clinical trial is well structured uh, to protect uh, the subjects. Uh, and also, of course, to have a, a documentation about all this. So these are the components that we, we are working on uh, that we need to make. Uh, we need to meet the requirements. Uh, WHO came to NAVDA April of 2019 for a pre-audit visit. And then they came, about 22 or 24 of them, came June 2019. Uh, for the first assessment visit. Of course, we've been doing self-audits a year, a year and a half before their visit. And that has helped us uh, greatly, uh, the self-audit, the self because it has made us more uh, uh, sensitive in terms of what and what we need to do. Uh, so when they came, at, we, we need to make 
out of 212, what we call sub indicators or requirements, we were able to make, you know, to satisfy more than 100. So we had 84 that they gave us corrective action, uh, preventive action uh, for. So 84 out of 20, 212 uh, are the sub indicators that we need to make. At maturity level one, we have 12 sub indicators. Maturity level two, we have seven that time sub indicators. At maturity level three, we had 65 sub indicators or requirements. And uh, in this particular journey, it is not like you got 95% and you are passed. No. You have to get 100%. Meaning, if you have everything in maturity level three, maturity level two, and you still have one sub indicator to make up for, in maturity level one, you are still regarded as one. Uh, so it is a very, very uh, stringent assessment system. Uh, so January 2021, as we speak, we now have maturity level one, we still have 12. And these 12 are the regulations that uh, we, will send, we send to the ministry, that the ministry need, needed to look at. Uh, and now it is with the Ministry of Justice. So we are moving ahead uh, in terms of where we are going. Uh, the process, I believe we will get our gazetting done. So once we do that, we will take care of 12 regulations or sub-indicators, 12 sub-indicators. Maturity level two is also related to regulation concerning pharmacovigilance. So by March 2021, we will satisfy 13 sub-indicators or requirements. The 19 that are left are corrective action, preventive action that have something to do with vigilance, marketing and licensing. For example, detection of substandard falsified medicine using true scan, which you, you are familiar with, sir, comes under this. They want to know that this agency is strong enough to go to the market and to be able to detect fake medicines, to be able to detect substandard medicines. Uh, it, has, it also has something to do with inspection. Uh, they want to be sure that we have enough staff to do inspection. They want to be sure that we have enough where with all you know, vehicles to go and do inspection. Because they don't want to give uh, approval for a country to manufacture vaccines when you don't even have enough tools to go and, manuf to go and inspect such uh, a new company. But all these are going on and we are believing that by May 2021, we will have satisf satisfied in 19. Uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed uh, because we are working very hard towards it, I'm confident. NAFTA and your rails will be back in a moment. Please stay tuned. Wanini. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Waka dayo. Ina gaja. Ina war gida da yara. Sanni da zuwa. Ah sanni. Sanni ko? Zo ka je wajen karo. Ka siyo kawon ka bara sami sanyi. Abba ko ma ka zauna. Haba yaya. Kuskure ne a aika yaro da bai kai shekaru 19 ba sai yan bara sa. Don yin haka kage sai sa shi ma ya so shi awan ya sha. Ba ni kudin na sayo. Ai ban sani bane. Ah na taba fada maka. Ya kamata a dinga kiyayewa. Don ma aikatan Nabdak tana gargadi da jama'a. Da su guji tura yaran da ba su kai shekaru 19 ba sai yan bara sa. Ba zan sake ba. Hakika ya zama wajibi ga mu iyaye. Da masu saye da sayarwa da dai duk jama'a a tabbatar an sa ido wanda bai kai shekaru 19 ba bashi da mu'amala da bara sa dan hadarinta. Ya zama wajibi ne mu hada kai dan samun nasara. Wannan sako ne na musamman daga Distillers and Blenders Association of Nigeria da hukumar Nabdak tare da ma'aikatan lafiya ta tarayya. Welcome back. If you are just joining in, you're watching Nafdak and your else. The Director General also updated the Honorable Minister about the developments within the agency with regards to ports inspection, track and trace, pharmacovigilance, 
laboratory upgrade, accreditation and reaccreditations. The Honorable Minister, Dr. Osage Haniri, espoused the critical role NAFDAQ is expected to play during this pandemic, especially given the terms with which producers of COVID-19 vaccines are willing to make available the vaccines not only to Nigeria or Africa, but globally. All countries have to indemnify the producer yes. because we are, uh, they are not ready to, take, to guarantee anything because we are all uh, more or less uh, uh, just uh, on our own yes. when it comes to that. So because of that, we rely heavily on the work of both the uh, DAFTA and the Africa Medicine um, Regulatory Harmonization Agency, yes. correct, of which you are. Uh, you know that Nigeria is in a hurry to get these vaccinations. <laughs> yes. Understandably so. It's yes. a terrifying disease going on. And uh, we are prevailing on the PSCDA to hit the ground running when it comes. So yes. if they are going to do that, we have to have these vaccines certified by you to use. So it's no use vaccine coming, but you can't use it because you don't have uh, a tax certification. So we need to work in a way that we can. Uh, uh, synchronize things. Uh, um, uh, at least I'm glad that two of the vaccines you are already uh, looking at would like to be able to uh, expedite work so that we yes. have some results to tell Nigeria yes. that yes, NAFDAQ is able to do it and has done this or this or that vaccine. We are also now looking at the initiative of our Nigerian scientists to produce vaccines. We have one candidate vaccine already from Ede, Professor Happy, mm -hmm. but it requires a substantial amount of money to do the clinical trials, and uh, we are working on introducing him to various sources of funding, uh, which uh, we, the Vice President is very interested. So uh, we are expecting uh, the AstraZeneca, we are expecting yes. some Pfizer, Pfizer and yes. uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson and uh, Sputnik. Dr. Ehaniri also reiterated the DG's goal of improving the volume of drugs produced locally, saying the federal government is fully in support of this and that all hands must be on deck to ensure that this goal is achieved. The Honorable Minister was presented with a plaque of recognition of his immense support for the agency and indeed the entire health sector in Nigeria. That's it for today. Make it a day at same time, same station next week for a fresh edition. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email NAFTA at nafta.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the Reforms Unit via email, reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the Reforms Hotlines on 0909-763-0506 or 0909-763-0506. Customer-focused, agency-minded. Remember, COVID-19 is real. Please ensure you and your family follow the safety measures as outlined by the NCDC. Stay away from crowded places as much as possible. And if you must be out there, please wear a face mask. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water and ensure you use only NAFDAQ-approved alcohol-based hand sanitizers. See you next week. Stay safe.